All right, welcome back to yet another tutorial in Maya. All right, today, check it out. We are going to take a look at uh, Camera Shake. And in this case, just have a basic car cruising through a scene, and at some point, it's gonna, engine's gonna rumble a little bit, and it's gonna roll through, okay? So that's a, a pretty good example of, of using Camera Shake. Um, you know, and camera shake is probably the most often overused effect of all time. So <laughs> once you learn how to do this, don't make everything all shaky, okay? Just what needs to be, all right? So essentially, here's what the render looks like so far. Um, you know, the car's looking pretty good. I just have a normal MIA paint material on there and, you know, a ramp shader on the, on the ground here. And, you know, no big deal. Just a nice looking car. Uh, this will be a, a, a composition in After Effects where I'll probably add the light fog attached to here going this way through the scene and I'll sort of spare that light fog rendering time because right now in this frame right here it's taken about a minute roughly to render this and this is just to give you an idea I've got 400 frames and rendering it is about 400 minute render or something like that so just something to be aware of when the more you get going on in a scene uh, the longer it's going to take to render. But anyway, this is just sort of showing you kind of what camera shake's about. And we're going to uh, set a camera shake system up. And it's a little bit convoluted uh, the way Maya kind of handles camera shake. But it's kind of for a reason. And, and I wish there was just a button you could push to say enable shake. And, you know, it would do this. And we'll sort of set about looking at the various system of how to make a camera shake. So let's get to it. I'm going to, I think I'll just start a new a new scene, but before we go there, make sure you go over and check out Lester Banks uh, every day, because Lester has good stuff for your brain. <laughs> All right, always go to the Maya tutorials right here. Uh, he has a whole bunch of other stuff too. And this was a really good uh, sort of explanation of rigging in Maya. Uh, by Zeth Willey, who does some great tutorials. So thank you, Zeth, for this piece. And, oh, while you're at Lester, go over and get yourself a t-shirt. I want this one next. Um, it's called the Awesome Texture Node. <laughs> All right? So he has a whole bunch of really cool cool t-shirts here for you so you can be, uh, you can stand out at work. You can be fashion conscious. All right? So there you go. Now, let's just start a new scene. I think I have one that I sort of started out here uh, camera shake tutorial start. I'm not going to save those. Here is just a simple plane and a sphere and I, uh, I'm at 300 frames on my animation so you can set this same kind of thing up. Alright, I just made the ball bounce a couple times and uh, just make sure that when you create your plane, select your plane, make sure you're in your dynamics menu set, come up here to your soft rigid bodies and create passive rigid body. Alright, so do that and then select your sphere come up to the soft rigid bodies here make that active rigid body all right i've already done that so i don't need to do it and i have a light here in the scene no big deal all right so that's it oh and then don't forget uh, to select your sphere and come up into your fields and just attach some gravity all right just attach standard default gravity all right that should give you something that's just your basic bouncing ball all right now, as we go about setting this camera shake up, the camera position is going to move quite a bit, and that's just sort of the, the way it works. So let's, let's sort of work through that. I'm going to sort of zoom out here so we can actually see what's happening you know, to this camera. It's going to move around. So first thing we want to do, come to Create, go to Cameras, and Camera. And there it is. Let's go to the Panels and look through that selected camera and sort of toggle out and move around and you know maybe find a maybe find a position that looks good all right I think I'll just sort of zero it out like that leave a little bit of room around here because in this camera we're gonna come over into the the camera attributes over here and you're gonna see something that says shake enabled go ahead and check in that box and we're gonna check the first one here and these control the vertical and the horizontal shake so go ahead and click in this box and right mouse click and create new texture. But before you do that, make sure, let's see, go over to your hypershade and we're, 
let's see here. You, you want to make sure that this is going to be a create 2D texture, but make sure you're set on your normal, okay? Because if you do a project, you don't want to do a projection of this or a stencil. So just make sure that this is, uh, you know, on 2D normal underneath your textures right here, underneath the create. All right. So with that in mind, I'm going to keep the hyper shade over here and actually might try and minimize this a little bit because I kind of want you to see what's happening with the camera movement in here. So first thing to do is check in this first field and we're going to go ahead and right mouse click, come down, create new texture. And so select a 2D fractal texture. All right, there's our 2D fractal. Great. Well, while we're looking at this, let's just sort of this amplitude is set kind of high for what we want for camera shake. So let's do a 0.100, you know, or a 0.1 or whatever. And check on the animated right there. All right. So we're almost there. Let's go over here and, and select that uh, camera again, maybe from the outliner. And you'll notice where we just added that. So that's what this is yellowed out for. I'm going to check this field, right mouse click create new texture and we're going to do the same thing we're going to create another fractal and we're going to set its amplitude 2.1 all right and I'm going to, oh and don't forget to check your animated all right i'm going to move that out of the way for a minute well by doing that all of a sudden our positioning of our camera has changed dramatically so we kind of want to fix that but before we do that I'm going to open up the hypershade a little bit more here. Let's see if we can find our, our fractals. There's the fractal 1, fractal 2. Okay, so we have both of these. And what we want to do is, is look at both of these because um, we want to rotate this one. Right now, they're both equal. And, uh, you know, Maya is just thinking, oh, this one is the same as this one. Well, our fractal 2 is actually going to control either our vertical or our horizontal positioning. So we want to sort of switch this one up so it's a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. And in your tabs over here, usually you can find your place 2D texture. Um, we want to rotate this. Uh, we're going to rotate this 40 to 45 degrees. I'll do that and hit enter and generally you won't see any change yet because we haven't really you know hooked this up per se so let's come over here and go back to the outliner right there and um, actually <laughs> it's good to keep your hyper shade up here too as well let's choose our fractal one and we'll choose that fractal one node from the uh, from the tabs here and we want to animate this time and right now you can see where it's set at zero. So I'm going to go to frame one and I'm going to go ahead and right mouse click key over this word time and I want to um, set key. All right. And then I want to bring this to the end of the animation and I want to set this to 100. And I'm going to go ahead and um, right mouse click and set key. I want to do the same thing for fractal two. So I'll go into fractal two. And we'll go back to the very beginning of the animation and we're going to set this to zero go ahead and right mouse click and set key and then bring it to the end of the animation and come in here and set this up to 100 and do a right mouse click set key all right now you can see where everything's going wild down here and essentially the ball is bouncing and our camera is still really sort of whacked out it's it's not really in position yet okay so what we need to do is just write a quick expression for fractal number one that um, allows it to oh it, it allow it, it'll allow the camera to be zeroed out in the scene so let's look at the color balance and here's how we do that first of all we're going to take the alpha gain right here to 0.25 okay and watch what happens when I when I just hit enter or click into the scene. Well, it, it kind of disappears down here still, but we're going to work with this alpha offset now. And we're going to assign an expression to the alpha offset. And what we're going to do is type in equals minus 0 0.5 and then one of those little star thingies <laughs> and fractal 1. 
period, and then alpha gain, small a, okay, because this is case sensitive sometimes, and a capital G A I N. All right. And once you have your capital gain or your alpha gain, <laughs> capital gains, alpha gain, go ahead and hit uh, your semicolon. And that will complete the that will complete the expression. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Sometimes you can hit enter on your uh, numeric keypad, depending on your if you're on a Mac or if you're on a PC. The numeric keypad sometimes works for me, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and hit just return on my keyboard, my main keyboard. You could hit enter on the numeric keyboard too. And you'll notice that it gives you a value here. And we've sort of lost everything. Everything is still sort of gone. But really, it's not. Here's where we have to correct for that camera. Um, once we've placed that expression, we basically want fractal number one to control all of our movements. So if we make some changes to this on the horizontal, then it will actually update to um, the, the vertical as well. Okay, So I'm going to sort of just drag and drop fractal number one onto top of fractal number two. And I'm going to come down here, and we're going to go choose other. And that will bring up the dreaded connection editor. <laughs> All right. So nothing to worry about here. What we kind of want to look at are three different things. We want to look at the alpha gain. We want to look at alpha offset and amplitude. So if you look at your, your left side over here, it should say fractal 1. And this one should say fractal 2. And everything should look kind of like it does here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and choose my alpha gain from my fractal 1. And I'm going to connect it to alpha gain of fractal 2. So that way, both of them will be the same. You'll notice right away, uh, the scene sort of changed. You know, all of a sudden, we have our camera position back here. And that is perfect. Now, what we want to do is connect our alpha offset as well. So I'm going to click that alpha offset there and alpha offset there. And I want to do the same thing for amplitude. I'm going to click on amplitude here and amplitude there. OK, so we should have all the connections made. If I move everything out of the way, there you go. So let's go back to the beginning of the animation. And the camera's shaking. And we have a lot of shake going on right now. And it's pretty consistent all the way through. Well. That's cool because basically there's an on and off switch, and it's this alpha gain right here. So if I were to turn the alpha gain all the way down, I'll go back to the beginning of the animation. There it is. It's, it's just like an on and off switch. And it's also an on and off switch with intensity because you can bring this up and really make it shake a lot more. Or you can bring that value down quite a bit to almost nothing. OK, so it's as easy as animating a value for your alpha gain. In this case, we have a falling ball. And right about there, let's see if we can let's see if we can move this forward. It kind of hits the surface right about there. So I may want to take it back one frame and click on my alpha gain over here, right mouse click, and set a key. And that means it's you know off from this point to this point. I'm going to move it forward one frame. And I'm going to move the alpha gain up to maybe, say, eh, maybe like 0.5 or something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and set another key. Right mouse click, set key. So when it goes back up into the air, I'm going to stop the shaking right about there. All right, I'm going to go to alpha gain. Oh. First, you want to lower this back down to 0, because we want, we want this value to be at 0. And I'm going to go ahead and set key. So I'll go back, rewind, and here's what I get. Boom. All right, so it's just a matter of you know adding. Whoop, let's go back a few frames. We'll kind of finish the rest of these out. Let me, uh, I'm going to go down here and play. There's our first bump. And right about there is our second bump. So I'm going to say at frame 68, keep the alpha gain at uh, 0, and go one more frame. And I'm going to take this alpha gain up to, say, maybe 0.3, or just a little bit less than I had last time. And I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see here. We'll, we'll set the gain. We'll turn it on. 
and set it down to zero at this point. So we'll kind of let it go. Well, actually, did I? Well, anyway, you get the point. Let's go back to the beginning and see what happened. I think I just set two zero keyframes. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe I didn't. Yeah. So, you know, a couple of Z's. Let's see if I can just get rid of that. Uh, let's see. Edit and do Z. I'm just going to sort of take away some of these values. Well, all right. Well, let's put another keyframe in here. See what happens there. I'm going to take my alpha gain from there all the way up to, uh, say, point. 0.5 set a key. It'll take quite a bit of, of um, sort of wrangling around with your keyframing in order to get shake that you like. Okay, and uh, remember you can keyframe your alpha gain and you can also keyframe the amplitude. So if I were just to sort of come to this alpha gain right here and break all the connections, I took just took all the keyframes off there. Now I should have just constant shake. But watch what happens. The constant shake is at 1 now. I'm going to bring this alpha gain down just a little bit. And we can bring that down, you know, to sort of a little less, less bumpy level. And you can also play around with the amplitude up here. We'll go ahead and do that. So you can bring amplitude up from, from this attribute as well and keyframe that. So imagine the possibilities. There's a ton of them. <laughs> okay, so that's how you do camera shake. It's kind of convoluted, and um, you know you may want to look at your hypershade here. Come to your graph, and um, actually let's select that camera first. Let's make sure we're selected on a camera. And uh, yeah, so we could graph, and you know let's graph the output input connections. And there you go. Uh, you'll see where there's a little bit of the expressions right there. Here's your camera. For your fractal 2 is your vertical shake. You can see where that's reading out as your vertical shake. And uh, our fractal 1, which is somewhere in here. Uh, oh yeah, fractal 1 is our horizontal shake. Okay? So that's it. Uh, a pretty simple process, but somewhat convoluted. <laughs> And like I said, I wish there was just a button that you could establish this with. But obviously, think about the possibilities of once you set up a camera like this, you can always sort of publish this as an asset so that you don't have to keep going back and doing this. And um, I'm sure somebody's probably written a shake script out there somewhere too. I just haven't really like found one. But essentially, that's sort of it. All right. So get shaky. And, you know, be sparing on this, please, <laughs> because we don't need to see things shaking all the time. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shake to this car as it finishes out the scene. And obviously there's things that are wrong with this. It's just pre-textured. I really don't have my treads on here yet or anything. And, uh, you know, it's a 69 Dodge Challenger. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not much of a Dodge fan, but I like this car. It looks kind of cool. Okay, so anyway get to it go make something that shakes and i'm glad you're watching and learning something because it's good for your brain and as always be a great person uh, be good to other people and always be good to yourself and life will be grand <laughs> all right and read the book read the owner's manual now okay hey thanks for watching